What is going on, everybody? This is Andrew from Defiancy. All right, guys, we're just going to jump right into this per usual. Right now, we're looking at the S&P 500's futures contracts. We call that ES, and we're getting a little bit of bounce off of the overnight lows. And price is just chopping around like we talked about. Um, the levels are the same. We have this value area high from yesterday, this value area low um, down here towards 43.70. And you're just going to get price, I think, it's just going to kind of it's just going to range back and forth, and you know what? This is perfectly scalpable price action. Um, you kind of have to be cautious in terms of adding a big long here because I do believe this move is – look, we've had a tremendous move. We talked about this. In order for, I think, you know, you really to be comfortable with this just continuing to go up here, you, you really need some profit-taking. You really need people to hedge. You really want this thing to, to have some constructive consolidation, All right? And that's what you're getting. So, you know, again – Going into the end of the year, we've talked about this. End of year rally, this is what's most likely at this point, is that whether this is a good idea, right, wrong, doesn't matter. People like to buy going into the end of the year. And I know for whatever reason, that really upsets people that are on the bearish side of things. They, they just absolutely hate the idea that people might want to buy assets, but they actually do. Um, despite what you might hear on Twitter, people want to buy stocks, believe it or not, going into the end of the year. They want to buy more of them. And again, don't try to fight the market. I, I, I mean, I don't even know I'm going into this, but I, I, get, I get on my Twitter feed. I see people complaining about it. And I'm like, okay, like you can complain about it or you can trade it, right? And look, there's a lot of reasons to be bearish, but you got to respect the price action. And right now the market is just ranging on, on a more macro scale or, or zoomed out timeline. I mean, this is just a ranging market. There's really nothing significantly bearish about this market. If anything, it's bullish. Um, you know, if you get below this 4,300 level, yeah, you probably want to be bearish again or really below this, you know, this 200 moving average. But right now things look good. I don't, you know, like I, I don't know why that's such a controversial take, but it is. I mean, people really just, they were very pessimistic. I'm realizing how pessimistic Twitter is or, or how FinTwit is. I guess we call that FinX now. But uh, just a kind of an amazing situation where we're still in this super pessimistic uh, sentiment environment and people absolutely hate this bump you can see it all over uh, the the analysis of, of people I respect I mean it's just kind of amazing but anyway so we're gonna end up you know look we're gonna short value area highs we're gonna long the lows if, if we get absorption on there we're just gonna scalp this out but ultimately we really want to flush we want something we want this thing to flush a little bit lower we want to see a little bit of pain that's what I really want to see before I get into a heavier long until then small size scalps and that's just going to be the you know the roadmap here going forward. It could be chopping like this for the rest of the week for all we know. So never assume price is just going to continue up. Uh, we'll see, right? Oh, we have a lot. And by the way, we have a lot of. Um, let's see if I can pull this up here. We have a lot of Fed talk this week. So you got the Jerome Powell speaking on on November eighth, and then this is actually not showing it, but you got and you got them on November 9th, actually. <laughs> Wow, we have them two two days this week, and you have unemployment claims on Thursday as well. But there's also a lot of other people within the um, Federal Reserve uh, system, whatever you want to call it, that are going to be speaking. So market might just kind of chop around. I mean, we're still in this state where it takes every little word that they say as, like, uh, objective truth. Or I shouldn't say that. It just cares about everything. The algos are picking up on every little thing they're saying, and, so that, that's kind of, I think, why we, we could chop around for at least until Wednesday tomorrow. But um, one thing I want to point out here is you know, I was dead wrong on this crude trade in, in the short term. I was, I mean, it looked to me pretty good here. I mean, you had multiple days where it looked like it was, it looked like it was putting in a bottom. But right after we made that video, when it started doing this, I was like, all right, this isn't good. Because you really needed it to hold above the 200-day moving average, uh, the EMA, which was – Right here, and once you broke, once you break below that, you know I'm backing off this trade. At least let me just say that I do not hang on to losers. Um, I, I do still think this is going to be a good trade, and I think we're all going to look back like, wow, that was such an easy long, you know. But I'm not going to like just expect for this to turn around at this point. It's getting hammered. It looks like crap now. I thought it was basing out, but you got to accept it as I mean it's a breakdown at this point, and we'll see how it reacts closer to the 77 level, 78. Again, I still think this thing's going to rip higher later. I don't really understand why it's selling off. Maybe I don't understand the crude market enough, but it looks to me like it's, you know, we do have a, a drop in diesel demand, but didn't look that significant to me based off of my 
limited understanding of of of, of that metric. Um, I mean, you know, you have a cut in in supply, so you would think that that would just kind of offset, and we would just kind of range. But the, it basically is looking at this Middle Eastern situation as like it completely doesn't care, and it, it has completely moved past it, which is kind of odd to me, to be honest. I don't feel like that's quite done yet. But again, I'm not going to fight price action. I, I you know, I think crude is going to be higher later. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but we'll just keep an eye on it. If, if this starts to base out like it did here, closer to here, then we'll look to re-long, but I'm going to back off of it for now. And then, you know, we talked about gold yesterday. It had to break down. I don't really want to short this, to be honest. I'm still in the mode of, like, look, I think I think gold's going higher, so I'd rather just wait for it to come here near this 1950 level to long it. We'll wait on that. If it gets there, great. If it doesn't, whatever. Um but I'm not going to chase it or anything like that. I'm definitely not going to short right here. And then silver, it's um, it's actually broken down further than I thought it would. But at this point, it was kind of holding this nice little structure here. But it's just going to follow gold, I guess. And we'll see what happens when it gets you know a little bit lower, assuming that gold falls as well. But again, I'm not actually actively trading these things. I'm just keeping an eye on them because I do believe they're going higher later. When I don't know, but we we basically just want to be able to get into some good longs. Um, if, if they present themselves. Well, silver now, it actually is not as obvious to me like where that would be, but I'm guessing somewhere around here, um, 22.25, something like that. We'll see. I mean, to me, this is overall a bullish structure on a higher time frame. It's just taking forever to play out. I mean, this thing is over like four years, and I don't really know how you trade that, to be honest. This is more of like an investment that you're going to have to hold on to for a while, but I do want to be part of this thing if it does something like this, which is, I think, what happens. I think eventually this thing breaks out and you get a big leg like this. That's why I've been talking about it, but it looks to me like this could be much longer than I originally anticipated. Gold looked like it was really headed for the highs, and now you have a fourth rejection here at 2,000. I mean, wow. Just a letdown. I don't know how to put it in any other way. Just can't get any momentum for more than a few weeks, but I'm still bullish on it. I mean, I, I, technically this thing still looks great, but you know me, you know, I'm a scalper. I'm not gonna wait on things. I'm not gonna hang out in position and just pray that it goes my way. If the, you know, if the charts look different, if the data looks different, I'm gonna cut, right? Or I'm gonna wait. And right now it looks like you're gonna get a, a, a trend, re, um, a break out of this trend retest, which is like right here about 1950. So when we get there, we'll reevaluate it. And pretty much everything is kind of in this weird limbo state. Like gold's coming back to this consolidation limbo state. Currently on the lower time frame, you have that with ES, like like zoomed in for this week. I mean, it looks like all markets that I really pay attention to are just kind of like waiting to see, digesting the moves that have happened. And you can see this in crypto, right? I mean, crypto basically is just, I mean, it's even more choppy and, and tighter range than, than anything we've talked about here, um, relative to its market cap at least. I mean, it is basically just chopping, doing nothing. Um, and that's kind of what Bitcoin likes to do, believe it or not. I mean, if you don't follow crypto, that might might not be what you think. But if you actually look, this price action you're seeing here, this is what crypto does. I mean, it just does it. It rips, and then it does nothing for, for weeks at a time. It's very annoying if you're a day trader. That's why I don't day trade it anymore. Um, but it's nothing to really be concerned about. I mean, it just... It's just a, it's a market that doesn't have a lot of people trading it. It doesn't have a lot of people buying or selling. And it's, it's just it's a low volume market, which is surprising because you would think that this would bring in a bunch more volume. But as you're seeing, it's not. If you actually look at the volume here, despite what you might hear on Twitter about like, oh my gosh, everything is totally different. It's not, guys. Look at this volume. You had these really nice candles here, and now you're basically back to normal. I said, you know, this is this this line here, if you can see is the average, the moving average of volume, you're well below that right now. So it's not like this is a fundamentally different market. I mean, it just, the quicker people accept that this, you know, Bitcoin might be getting a little bit ahead of itself, I think the better they're gonna be off looking at this objectively. And again, that doesn't mean this thing crashes. I don't actually think that happens, but I think you're more likely to stay in some sort of range. We, and we talked about this really, you know, a few weeks ago when we broke out. You know, it was kind of obvious that the broader market, crypto participants, would see this as something that it really wasn't, which is, you know, some kind of game-changing paradigm shift and, like, we're going into up only. That's not likely. I mean, we're going to need a few things happen, I think, um, 
for that for that to take place. There's still a ton of macro risk, and people are still hesitant to really jump into these things, despite what, again what you might hear from your favorite influencer. And ETH is actually looking better. Um, I actually like it from a shorter time frame perspective, actually a shorter and longer time frame perspective. But one of the reasons I like ETH is it has a clear kind of path forward for me. Like when I look at ETH here, basically if it stays above this. 19 or 1850 level it's likely to keep going up um you probably can't see it as well on the daily here but that was a level that we really had trouble getting over as you can see here um, let me move some of this stuff and typically when you finally break over one of these like resistance nodes you, you kind of want to hold it if you come back to it so if we get back below this over like a day then you want to be a little bit more cautious but as long as we stay above this level here I'm just gonna. I'm just going to assume that this thing's in an uptrend. That's just how I see it. And then the altcoins look. Every time Bitcoin pulls back, they pull back harder, right? But these things actually still look pretty good. Like here's Dogecoin. It had this big macro breakout, depending on how you draw your wedge. But uh, I mean, I, I think this could come back down to you know around 0.7. But I, I just don't really see that much downside for some of these things. They've just, they've just these things are just wrecked. When you have an asset that's down this much and has been consolidating for this long, you just run out of sellers at some point. It doesn't mean that you won't get new sellers, but at, you know, at some point these things are just going to naturally decompress. Um, but obviously, look, if you get a if, if Bitcoin has a problem, this is going to make new lows as easy as it would go up. So again, I'm not saying that I'm super bullish on Doge. I'm just saying if Bitcoin stays put, this will probably just try to go up. I mean. And you're going to see that with a lot of altcoins. It doesn't even have anything to do with fundamentals. It's just decompression. We have shorts that are continually, uh, you know, coming into this market short, and you know, altcoins in general that are shorting the, these altcoins. And that's what a lot of these moves are to begin with. Um, but eventually you get spot buyers, right? And, you know, a lot of the, look at this, like XRP just blast off. I mean, a lot of that's shorts, right? I mean, I haven't looked at it that close. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just spot buyers. But what I'm trying to really get across here, I'm just rambling, but these are not really good markets to short. I mean, Bitcoin actually might actually make more sense to short than altcoins, despite what you might hear, because at least you know that you have buyers here. There are people to take out. There are people who are there to sell. And don't get me wrong, if Bitcoin breaks down, the alts will break down harder. But I don't really like the risk reward on a higher time frame. For these altcoins I, I just don't see them as great shorts they may not be the best longs right now but they're probably a better long than a short to be honest or that maybe that's just how i see it um but anyway you know i'm rambling here but just kind of a recap we're going to take you know we're going to step back from crude we're going to keep an eye on it gold looks like it's breaking down we want to get closer to this 1950 area to, to re-examine that and the indexes they're just chopping around guys I mean, there is no reason to to expect that these things are just going to crash or break out um, today or even tomorrow. I mean, they're more likely to get faded. Whatever move happens significantly above this value area high, you know, might get faded, and whatever breaks down closer to here is probably going to get faded. Meaning, you really want to scalp this back and forth until you get a definitive breakout. That's just how I see it. But ultimately, like let's say I wasn't a scalp trader. I think you have to look at this in a bullish in a bullish way, especially if we can break out, you know, out of this downtrend. Um, but you might have quite a bit of chop before that happens. I just want to throw that out there. But as you can see, if these indexes break above this, that's going to be a pretty explosive move, I think. Well, that's really all I got for you today, guys. Um, until next time, happy hunting, friends. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you'd like more updates like this. And let us know in the comments, what do you think about today's video and Defiancy update and insight? Also, make sure that you join our Discord, our free community chat where we discuss things like this, what's going on in real time. Typically, our Discord community is the first to know what's happening. And we would love to see you there. Check the link in the description. And until then, we'll see you in the next Defiancy Insight video. Bye for now.